One moment, you could drown. The next, baked in the sun. On rocky shores where ocean meets land, conditions swing wildly between extremes. It's harsh, but some strange-looking creatures have adapted to life on the edge. Look closely at these rocks. Notice the red, sesame seed-sized blobs scurrying about? These aren't insects. Count the legs. Not six, but eight. These are snout mites, a kind of arachnid related to ticks and spiders. Living near volatile ocean waves is precarious for mites who can easily get knocked into tide pools. But rather than sink or swim, these mites have adapted to walk on water. Taking advantage of the water's surface tension, they splay out their eight legs evenly and float on a breeze until they reach a place to climb out. And if a group of snout mites are washed into the same tide pool, they cluster together, forming a raft to improve their chances of reaching dry ground. At least, that's what we think they're doing. Maybe it's a rowdy pool party. Back on the seaside rocks, one nondescript insect waits patiently for the tide to go out and reveal its target. Barnacles. Hundreds of thousands of barnacles, recently underwater, are now exposed to the sun. Left high and dry until the tide returns, the barnacles close up shop to keep out the elements, tightly shutting their hard top plates together. But their predators are patient. These unassuming barnacle flies are the number one cause of death for some barnacles. But it's not the adults they have to worry about. It's the babies. Female flies lay their eggs at the top of the barnacle's outer plates. After hatching, the larva latches on and waits for the tide to come back in. When the barnacle feels the ocean's touch, it instinctively opens up its plates to feed. Sensing its chance, the larva crawls into its cozy new home inside the barnacle. And what a home it is. The growing larva is surrounded by its favorite food, the soft flesh of the barnacle while being protected from predators and the elements by its host's armored plates. When they've eaten themselves out of house and home, fly larvae move to a new barnacle, and then another, until finally settling into the empty husk of its last meal. A nice safe spot to pupate into adulthood. Then, emerging as an adult fly, it's off to find a mate and start the cycle over once more. A little farther up on the rocks, a prehistoric looking creature scurries about. This strange wingless insect is a jumping bristletail. At first glance, these rocks don't seem to be a great place to live. Where's all the food? But bristletails persist on a diet of lichens and algae that encrust the rocks using their single hinged jaws like a paper cutter to snip morsels off the rough surface. Perfectly adapted to their craggy home, modeled patterns on the bristletail scales blend in with the stony surroundings, which helps them avoid detection by predators. And when they sense danger, they run fast for the nearest crack. Or, as their name suggests, they jump more than 10 times their body length into the air. And if camouflage, running, and jumping all fail, those speckled scales are slippery, which helps them escape from a predator's grasp. First showing up in the fossil record more than 200 million years ago, bristletails are some of the earliest insects to have evolved. Clearly, they've got survival in this harsh landscape figured out. Compared to other places on Earth, the rocky intertidal doesn't host too many bug species, and there's a good reason. Unrelenting cycles of tides, waves, and open exposure to predators mean brutal and dangerous conditions. But for a few species with just the right adaptations, this is home. <laughs>